Welcome to episode 645 of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I'm talking about haunted places in the U.S. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions. Our accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live uh, recording streams on Discord, or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP, Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of my show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting all my shows up there. If you'd like to support my show, excuse me, if you'd like to support my show, you can um, do that in a few different ways. You can share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can find books I've written over on Amazon, Paranormal Fiction and Nonfiction, including my, my most recent release, uh, Salcedo Paranormal Experiences. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and that is um, my first book that I've written recently that is, and so far, that is directly tied to the podcast. It has a lot of um, content in there from, um, from previous shows, uh, both from True Paranormal Stories on the Web and then most of my experiences as well. So that's what is in that book. Um, you can also sign up for the Patreon page where you will get one extra episode per week, whenever possible, of True Paranormal Stories on the Web. Or you can just make one-time donations through PayPal. Uh, support is never expected, but always appreciated as there are expenses in making these shows from equipment to uh, research materials to travel expenses in some cases. And I think that covers everything. So uh, we left off still in California. And um, so I have a few locations here. Um, all these articles, whatever ones I review in, in these shows, they'll always be included in the episode description. And uh, you'll want to check those out because they have uh, not only the full text, which I don't read the whole like, articles, but they will have pictures of the locations I'm talking about. Uh, along along with the text, so you can see what they look like, and um, those are always really neat to look at when you're when I'm uh, putting these shows together um, and reading the material here. So, this first location I want to talk about, at least for this episode, is uh, Preston Castle in I own I own it Iona, no I own, I believe, I O N E. It's a former reform school that has reports of paranormal activity. So um, this first article is from a website called paranormallegacy.com. And um, the article here is just titled The History of Preston Castle. So um, it was also known as the Preston School of Industry or Preston Youth Correctional Facility. So that gives you an idea of sort of things that it was at different times. Uh, it's nearly 50,000 square feet uh, large, basically the size of it, that includes a basement, four stories, and a three-story annex, so in, I guess in addition to the main building. Uh, the castle was built during the 19, I'm sorry, the 1890s, and uh, it's surrounded today by 13 acres that have um, other buildings on them as well. So it was known as the um, best reform school uh, to the outside world, but the article says that uh, it was a very hard, brutal life there. So we're not going to, um, to uh, talk too much about that part of it just because it is dark. Um, and uh, just because that's not what we cover on the show mostly, as much as we can avoid that, just know that it was a, like I said, the article here, 
not a good, not a happy place for many people that had to go there or even work there. Uh, an example of this was there was um, the head housekeeper apparently was um, killed on this location in 1950. And the suspects were um, basically the people that were wards, which are the people that are staying there, but also staff. Um, but her re murder remains unsolved, according to this article here, as of whenever this came out. That's the other thing I forgot to mention, because I always forget to mention these things. Whenever I talk about these locations, please look into whether or not the location is um, is open to the public or not. Basically, just make sure that if you are thinking of going there, make sure it's okay first and follow any of the directions or instructions about arranging to do so. I don't ever suggest or recommend trespassing for many reasons. Um, so says that um, her spirit is still there at the castle um, with the spirits of other people that passed away there as well. Um, so it says that the state of California uh, closed the facility in 1960. It um, Then it, from there it deteriorated over the years. And uh, it's listed as a California state historical landmark and uh, is also on the National Register of Historic Places. In 2014, the property was uh, given to the uh, Preston Castle Foundation, which has volunteers and uh, their head volunteers. They plan events and public relations activities uh, to make efforts to preserve and um, to repair the building there, the recite there. So it says that today visitors that take the tours um, are able to sense the basically the history of the place. Um, basically suggesting through energy and emotion and all those things. And uh, people have been reported to hear or to, to feel cold spots. Um, they also feel intense fear and hear unexplainable noises. And um, so apparently, again, this is as of this article. I don't know if it's still open today. That's why I always suggest you look into these locations before you um, you try to go there just in case things have changed since these articles came out. So uh, this next article on this location is from the lineup.com. It's actually the dash line dash up.com. Title of the article reads Preston Castle, the haunted reform school you can actually visit. So uh, says that the, uh, there are a lot of, the stories about what happened there, and those are part of what leads to the haunting there. Um, so it, it is apparently a very the building is is an amazing piece of architecture. It has um it's massive it's massive building made of uh, brick, and uh, it's also known as um, Preston Castle, but it's been again it has those other names as well that refer to what it was more than just that. Uh, it's considered one of the most uh, striking examples of Romanesque revival architecture uh, in the area and in the country. And um, so let's see here. Talks about the uh, the reports of activity there. Uh, and then it goes, but first it goes into the history. It says it was opened in 19, 1894 as a reform school, and that was the School of Industry. So at first it started off only having room for seven uh, wards, or basically um, teenagers that were under the guardianship of the state of California, who were then um, transferred there from uh, other locations. It says that hundreds of troubled youths passed through the doors there over the years, uh, including some that became more well known later in life, including uh, Merle Haggard, uh, let me see here, poet Neil Cassidy, Cassidy, yeah, uh, author Edward Bunker, Edward, yeah, okay, and Tony Camaro, Camaro. 
So um, he was a rum runner, apparently, in during Prohibition, who later built the Stardust Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, it says that the building was uh, vacated in 1960 after a new, uh, better facility was constructed for that purpose. Uh, so, and um, the it closed again in in 2011, but um, it, the first article there did mention that it was open for tours and everything, right? It's due to um, try to help keep the uh, upkeep the building, give provide funds for all that, and so. Uh, but it says that the people that visit the the place today often compare it to the uh, the haunted mansion featured in Stephen King's TV miniseries Rose Red. That's fascinating. Uh, and even though the um, the the place that appeared in that movie was actually somewhere else, it was uh, Thornwood Castle, which is near uh, Tacoma, Washington. The uh, Preston School for Industry may have said more, more in common with King's um, location than uh, so because of that, uh, just because of the appearance of it and everything. So getting on to reports here, um, it says that um, people have reported hearing uh, strange noises, experiencing cold spots, having feelings of dread, and um, the, there are apparitions apparently seen there as well of uh, former wards and then also the housekeeper that was, of course, killed there. Uh, says that there were a few unexplained deaths in the location over the years, and there's said to be a lost cemetery on the grounds that contains the graves of 23, 23 former inmates. And again, this is said to be, so I don't know how true that actually is, it is the murder of the housekeeper, uh, Anna Corbin, that um, is the most... Uh, enduring mystery, according to this article here. That's the one that was remained unsolved. So, goes into the reports of that more. Uh, and so we're not going to read too much into that. Again, I will include these articles in the in the description, so you can read them all uh, completely for yourself. And, uh, let's see here. So, looking at um, the rest of the article here, it talks about uh, people, different groups that have visited the location, paranormal investigation, TV shows. Now, keep that in mind. That means there could be exaggeration and or um, sort of falsified evidence from any number of sources um, that kind of want to make a TV show more than they want to make accurate um, accurate shows about actual investigations. So this is just, um, this uh, article mentions the different TV shows that have visited there, including Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, The Other Siders, never heard of that one, and My Ghost Story. Uh, apparently on the Ghost Adventures episode, the, um, the host of that show, uh, Zach Baggins, claimed to be partially possessed by a spirit, possibly the ghost of Annie Corbin. Now, like I said, just keep in mind, it is a TV show, so... Uh, says that books have also been written about the location and the hauntings. Uh, so including Behind the Walls by Jamie Rubio. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Who was a historical journalist that uh, conducted an extensive investigation into the life and death of Anna Corbin. Uh, it says that today it's a, the site is a landmark. As mentioned in the first article there, the um, there's a nonprofit organization called Preston Castle Foundation that maintains the building and opens the, the castle to the public um, and then hosts various events there as well to sort of, um, again, provide funds to keep the place from, from falling apart. And uh, so, yeah, that's the first location uh, we have to talk about here for today. Oh, boy. Let me see here. Did I not? Okay. 
So it appears that I did not put the rest of the text in here I wanted for the other locations I was going to talk about. So let's see here. Yeah, that's where this document ends. Lovely. But um, anyway, so I'll just uh, fill some time here while I get that fixed. Um, these locations, these schools and, and also other places like asylums and all those things, it seems like so many of them, once they close, and even in some cases while they're open, they, um, there's so many reports of paranormal activity in them, I think because of all of the, um, just the trauma that happened there in those locations to various people. And uh, so I think that's a big part of why that, uh, that, that, that's so common among all these locations. So, but, um, but yeah, that's, I could probably do a whole series of shows on just um, places like that, that used to be medical facilities and, or uh, um, asylums of any kind, especially going back to when there wasn't as much known about uh how to how to treat people what the, what the best treatments were for people a lot of experimentation going on in a lot of those places and uh so yeah that's that's uh, something that if you ever look up just haunted asylum or haunted hospital you can find just probably endless search results talking about that and uh so yeah that's that's uh, definitely a common thing that you will find when researching these places as uh as I have, and I don't cover a ton of that on the show because I try to cover the more positive things in general, but we can't ignore either that a lot of what is said to cause paranormal activity is not so not so positive, not so good experiences. So, um, so yeah, let me see here. Uh, I think I got it, so let me just scroll up a bit. And we will get to the material here. So, um, yeah, I apologize for that. I don't know why I did not did not uh, put in the material there. So, but uh, it's just amazing too. Going back to this whole idea of this series, I'm just covering a handful of locations in each state that are said to be haunted. If you try to find all the places in the state or country, or whatever, that are said to be haunted, it's going to take you forever, if you're able to do it. Because it seems like everywhere has stories of one kind or another of paranormal activity. So, um, so yeah, anyway, I think I've got what I needed here, so we will, uh, I'll just do, I'll just start telling you about the places that I have saved for future shows, because we don't really have... A ton of time here to get into a lot of articles again, and I apologize for that. Um, the joys of uh, research, doing all these things is, um, yeah, sometimes you don't th do things that you thought you did. So um, looking at the chat here, Matt, uh, Matt Tall says, Preston Castle is a uh, two-hour drive from me. Uh, they have uh, haunted tours for 50 starting in October. All right, I'm going to Preston Castle soon. Uh, thanks, James. Yeah, I don't know. No problem. You have to let me know how it goes. Um, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Ricky says in the chat there. Let us know how it goes. So, um, so the next location I have to talk about here, uh, just to give you an idea, an idea of what we'll be talking about in future shows, the Whaley House. That is a, uh, it's an older house. Let's see here. It's, uh, it's in San Diego. It's considered one of the most haunted houses in the U.S. And um, so that's the next location. Uh, I've seen that on different TV shows. That's another one of those locations that has been covered on TV shows. Uh, the big part of the, the haunting there, I mean, I've heard that the family that lived there is said to haunt the place, but also there was... Um, a possible wrongful conviction, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, that the spirit there, one of the spirits is said to be there, is um, caused by that. So, but, uh, so yeah, that looks like based on the article here, that is correct. 
Um, so I'll just uh, start, start going through this article, and we'll probably revisit it next time, next episode here. But uh, this first article is from, uh, let me see here, hauntedrooms.com. And uh, the Whaley House Museum, San Diego, California. That's the title of the article here. So um, it is in California. It's in San Diego. And uh, it's been, um, the area was settled in, uh, let's see here. It wasn't incorporated in 1850, but there are people that live there um, as far as, like, Settlers from from Europe, I guess, uh, since 1769. So, um, looking into the rest of this article here, it's a two-story Greek revival home, and it was carefully designed by Thomas Whaley, again the 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 namesake of the house, and uh, it was built using bricks made in Whaley's own brickyard. So that's amazing. Uh, it housed Thomas and his family, as well as it served over the years as a uh, convenience store, a county courthouse, and a uh, and San Diego's first theater. That's a lot of different things that have been featured in that place. Uh, it talks about tragedies that started plaguing the family after moving in, and uh, people in town started whispering about a curse, as will happen, especially the further back you go in time. Uh, Thomas had been warned, apparently, before construction that the land he had purchased may have come with a, uh, a wrathful spirit, and of course he dismissed this at the time. Um, so before it was the site of the house, it was a gallows. It was a site of the town gallows, where executions of course were carried out and um the one of the most infamous of these is of a man named uh james yankee jim robinson and he was sentenced to death following a charge of grand larceny and he he is the one that i was talking about there where the idea is that um he was he, he, he still is there because, in his mind, he was innocent. I don't know the details on that, but, um, but yeah, so that's the, the story behind that. The family has been seen there. Uh, this article, the first article here, really goes into the history of the whole family. And um, so maybe what we'll do is we'll save that for next time and uh, continue this first article here. And I would have had done if I would have had the text in place beforehand, but that happens. So um, we'll carry on with this first article next time. And uh, yeah, so this is another one of these. I've heard of this location. I've seen it on TV. It's really uh, weird sometimes to um, to find these places mentioned in articles and then think about think back to all my years of TV watching and realize, oh yeah, I've seen that place on on different shows about. Not so much the investigation shows, but shows, but just the ghost story shows. Anyway, thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.